tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Johnson. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey there, Halt and Catch Fire fans. Welcome back to After Buzz TV's Halt and Catch Fire After Show. We're going to be breaking down Season 2, Episode 6, 10 Broad 36. My name is Isaac Johnson, and alongside of me hosting this fine podcast... David Abbott. David here Abbott. Here for the long run, the short run, whatever run you want, I'm here for it. We appreciate you being here for all runs, Dave. Yes, uh, sometimes I'll have the runs, uh, but that's <laughs> just another way of saying I don't like running okay yes good. i thought that was uh, referencing to something else. no yeah no. no okay we don't reference that here glad we cleared that yeah up. i'm glad it cleared up as well uh folks if you're uh if you're familiar with the youtube you should be watching it on youtube right now so you can see Dave's we're very good looking handsome face yes. uh but if you're not familiar with the youtube head over to youtube.com after buzz tv subscribe to the channel like this video if you're watching it leave a comment comment really about it. your shirt Choices, yes. My shirt choices. Anything that you'd like to leave a comment on, preferably. Or you could talk the about the show. Yeah, that's, but, yeah. That's, let's actually talk about the show now. Okay. Uh, how did you feel about Ten Broad Thirty Six, Dave? I thought my pro probably my favorite episode. Yeah, you said that last week. Is the, this, well, is this now I couldn't. That episode? I couldn't know that this week was coming last <laughs> that's, week. That's true. Um, I think uh, we, we were saying while watching it, a lot of satisfying things happened. Absolutely. This, I, if, it, if the episode would have ended without that Joe part at the end, mm -hmm. I would have said, oh, this episode left me wanting more. But that was like a great ending to the episode. Yeah, man. Um, I'll, I'll agree. This is uh, one of my favorites. I, I, oh, okay. They're like my children. I can't I've already really... forgotten last week's episode, so I don't even <laughs> know what happened. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, they're like my kids. I can't really just pick one. You don't have any kids. Yeah, I don't have any kids. That's, That's right. true. Um, but I thought this was a super effective episode. Mm -hmm. um, I like where we got last episode with giving all of the characters really cool individual storylines. Yes. Um, and this episode really just using them all to, to the best ability. I thought it was yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, the Superman of episodes. Yes. It just it, yes. it left one uh, building at a single bound. But yes. in this case, it was an episode and not a building. <laughs> okay. So not like that at all. So it's different, yeah. <laughs> but you see, it's, a, it's called a metaphor. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm picking it up. Okay. Uh, you're picking up what I'm laying down. Yeah. So uh, Joe there, um, Sarah's gone. She seems to come back to get her stuff, move things around. What a, what a, what a heavy way to begin in there with Joe. I thought uh, I wrote down good phone acting. <laughs> I think, you know, people always forget that actors are playing off of no one when they talk on the phone. Maybe somebody yeah, off screen, but Figure often lines. if they're bigger stars, they're probably not coming in to be the opposite side of a phone. So they have to create these moments all by himself, and I thought solid phone acting. Yes, yeah, solid phone acting. Mm -hmm. um, was really uh, was really moved by that stuff with him alone. And then, of course, he would get him into Jacob, you know, going over all the mutiny stuff. And, you know, I was thinking... Um, Gosh, you know, Joe, you know, of course, Joe's really going to fight for them. He's got like a personal stake in that, but maybe more largely so that his personal stake is is trying to still win Sarah back. So if he does well with the dad, then, you know, I mean, that that the prenup that came, um, I went back and watched the episode oh. and I figured out that 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 was that came from Jacob. It did. Um, because you see her like as soon as she sees the prenup, she goes she into the bathroom the and on the phone right. so she's talking the dad on the phone there so that's what you know okay came from. so then what was so her whole reason for leaving last week then was just the, was the, the cameron stuff the cameron um, stuff also he was dishonest happened. with her so i think that she slightly though right uh, pretty dishonest. i mean he's not the cheater in this uh situation. yeah we'll get to we'll get to the cheater right. in a bit but I don't know i like seeing him really kind of gun for them with with jacob i like uh you know, I don't know. Like that's a, that's a thing that he does well is sort of convince people of what he they does. need, and he's a real salesman. He's not like super tech heavy, but you know, like that's that's some of what I'm seeing really being really effective. That that's kind of his wheelhouse of you know 
He's a strong suit there. What am I trying to say? Yeah, well, I think he's throwing, I think, one, to get Sarah back, but two, he has nothing else besides this job. And he's, like, locked yeah. in. He has a lot to prove on so many levels. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think if we all had so much to prove and so much to gain from working so hard, maybe we'd all just work a little bit harder, Isaac. So yeah. stop working, not working hard enough. Okay, well. I'm, maybe I'm, if your wife started trying to leave you or something. <laughs> <laughs> I got to talk to her about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, so please, step do. It up. please do. Um, she'd appreciate the uh, the topic. Then. Sure. Um, well, and I I thought uh, as far as Joe is like, um, you know, I mean, he he's got no control over the situation with, with Sarah there, um, and it seemed like I mean, well, this is my question to you. Okay, ask why, me. Why is he? You know, he gets the the leverage there with negotiating like how much mutiny he's going to pay, and then he you know really fights hard and gets. Jacob to say, look, you can go down to 350, but right. that's it. You know, start at five, though, for right. sure. Like, I like that Jacob doesn't back down there. That's, you know, that's yep. who this guy is, right? But um, he did back down. Well, but he, he knew that he had sort of, like, wiggle room. But, I don't know, I feel like he Joe was able to convince him. Yes, he was is, able to convince. You know, how, use, how useful this is. But my question to you is, why was he being so hard-nosed in the meeting with, with Donna and Cameron? I wondered that, too, but I think it's that... He feels like this is his thing. This is his idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think they would not let him have any say in anything that they do without, if he just gave them a price and said, and then if he came to him afterwards with mm-hmm. like, I want you to fix your interface. So he'd be like, uh, no, this is our thing. But so he hiddenly, I think, went for this to gain leverage, as they said, so he could have a say in a few things. So his opinion would be heard and forced right. to create. Yeah, I mean, I I get that. Um, it just was, you know, he, he they're they're doing the negotiation and it's five dollars. Donna comes back pretty smartly with him um, and very you know resolute as well. But man, he's not going to budge, you know. And I mean, was, I did think he was going to budge after the breakdown part, which she's yeah, crying. Which I thought yeah. like maybe that was like a tactic of her right, own. But right. Obviously, she's got a lot of stuff going with on. Pregnant so tears. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the worst guy. I think. Yes. It's like but, a pregnant pause. Yes. But it's pregnant tears. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what the, I don't even know what that means, Dave. But a pregnant pause yeah. is like a large pause. No, I know what a pregnant oh, pause okay. means. But you don't know what pregnant tears are. Yeah. Yes, you do. You just saw them on TV. <laughs> I did see them on yeah. TV. Um, well, you know, but him being so resolute there, that was I'm like, man, is it just a control thing? Is it just him, you know, trying to prove himself? I mean, he's still proving himself to Jacob. That's a yeah. you know, that's a thing. But I gotta, I gotta feel like it's more largely tied into to what's going his own on with ego. Sarah. Well, his oh. ego, but then with Sarah. Why would it have to do with Sarah? The five dollar thing. Well, just that if he does well here with you know with what's going on with the company, that he can somehow get back into her good graces. I'm not saying it's a great plan, right? But it seems like you know that conversation he's having. Well, he's not having a conversation with her. He's just leaving her messages, I right? Guess. Um, you know, saying like I know that you're there and all that stuff. Yeah, and I feel like you come in here to just to move Dirty things bottles. around. Do you want yeah. me to see these things? Right, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you know, that's you know, sort of common in some people's lives when everything else is spiraling out of control. Personally, then you just delve really deeply into work. And you know, I I I don't know. Somehow, did you pick up any of that? Or well, I mean, I think Joe is the uh, character that. Uh, says the least of what is actually going on in his head. I think right. he is the most kind of like in, inner internal character in mm-hmm. this. So we never really know what Joe's thinking. Yeah, it's kind of hard to know. Yeah, but I mean, I think he wants power. And I think, um, yeah, I think it's de- it's definitely there's a little bit of an ego thing. I'm not sure if the negotiating part had anything to do with Sarah per se. I mean, I think he wants to do well. I don't know if... He gets five dollars or four dollars. Whether that would make any difference in his relationship, but um, I don't know. He's playing the long game, and I think there's an element of that he enjoys this. Though he doesn't like smile yeah. during any of it, but I think he loves the negotiating, hard nose. Yeah, and I think there's at no point where he it's not a planned to what he wants. Sure. Yeah. No, I get that. Um, it was just, you know, it was just hard to, you know, when he's negotiating with Jacob for in favor of them. Right. Um, and then being in the room with them, I thought, okay, well, he's just going to do this for a minute right. to see that he can sort of exert his power. But then he'll come down and really give him a break because he really believes in what they're doing. But maybe some of it's more largely tied to just that, you know, whereas opposed to last season, everything was dishonest. This is honest Joe. And 
he has a chance to actually build something valuable and not do it in an unhanded way. I mean, everything's kind of out in the open at this yeah. point. Jacob knows about it. Sarah knows about it. You know, it's it's something that can be very successful, and I see him having a lot staked in that. But I'm like, man, like, can he can he cut them a little bit of a break? There? I mean, we saw that he was going to. I think he was going to all along. Um, right. But and I also think we learned this episode that I I think Joe I you know we talked a little bit last week on is this all a ploy this whole first half of the season for Joe to make some big evil turn right but I, I feel like we've learned that he's not, solidified that's not yeah, gonna happen I don't think so no um, well and then we've got him in the the room there all the coders have come together I like that scene um, and they're you know they're gonna try to fake him out which uh, neither of you and I are tech hit savvy but like the Commodore 64 he wants I'm to very be... tech savvy okay, okay well... they had the blue thing <laughs> and the computer guy <laughs> yeah, yeah okay well, they're, they're yeah. technical terms you yes. have to explain them to me later but, sure um, trying to use the Commodore 64 to look like Unix basically and, and I, Unix is what well, do you know? Uh, personally? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know either. No, uh, well, no, it, it's, it's, a, it's an operating it's system. It's an operating yeah. system. Um, and it's brand new, or at least it's it's not really widely used, or at least that's what I think. So why so. would he want... So it's just basically like saying, you're on a PC, I want you working off a Mac. I think he sees more... Lo- like saying, what you're saying, is it's a long game. I think he sees more long-term potential than using I, that. Yeah, I didn't know if perhaps I missed something where he maybe had stake in the things that he was asking for, you know? Like the AT and T thing and the Unix thing, but I, yeah. I don't think he does. It's one of those things like where you're saying like you feel like he he has like kind of planned out a lot a of these reason, steps. A reason, specific reason why he wants those things. Yeah, and we don't know yet. But yeah, we I don't think know that he's he's well like with the game that he chooses there is chess, the fake chess, the fake chess. And that's, but he, I think he knew. I mean, I could. He must have known he was being played with almost. Do you think almost immediately? I wonder how immediately. How immediately? Um, well, I think it's like. You know, his, his his sort of business model or, you know, I'm going to use this piece and this piece and right. this piece. It's kind of like chess. So The only thing I didn't thing. like is, like, Tom's like, you know, he doesn't know that much about computers. But the whole freaking first season, I mean, they know this guy knows a ton about computers. Not really, though. He knows really? how to talk a good game about computers, but he doesn't actually have the knowledge of it. He would probably, like, read a pamphlet really quickly. But he knew everything that was going on in the, he when he ripped that thing open. I mean, he eventually figured out. I mean, it's not that he has zero knowledge right. on computers, but that that conversation with him and Tom in the kitchen, Tom's really kind of feeling him out there and realizing, and then when Joe realizes that he can't really keep up with the right. tech, he just kind of like, you know, gives him like some sort of blow off line and then moves yes. out of the kitchen really fast. Just like, you know, like I'll hire the right person at the right time. Right. Move it on. Right. You know, um, but my thought was like, Okay, this thing's happening. It looks like it's about to go through, and he's he's gonna fool them, and then he tests a little Tests more. the thing. You see, everyone's looking their faces. I thought that was a great moment. It was man. when he opened the thing up. Like, oh, what do we got going here? And he played it very well. Like, he didn't blow up. Like, still kind of like sarcastic, but and it shows that while he was looking through everything, he was also taking it in. Like, he wasn't just like. Yeah, I hate this throwing everything out. Right. Like he was really soaking in to see what they did. Right, and that's but that's where I thought the frustration is not just that they tried to fool him because I mean that's that'd be kind of ironic for him to be upset about that. But at the same time, it's that personal stake in it and having yeah. your yeah. own personal success and building something real. And he's just like, well, okay, I gave you this specific list list of tasks. You know, like Donna coming back to. Yep. To negotiate with him there. Um, and then they didn't do it. And, you know. Yeah, I wrote down that, you know, I didn't feel bad for the girls at that moment. I thought bo- what Boz said was right. And they mm. were looking for the cheap fix. And though uh, Joe may be, you know, a jerk sometimes, mm-hmm. he was like giving them a fair amount of things. And mm-hmm. they spent so much time trying to trick him right. instead of just doing. <laughs> Again, it's like these girls just like can't quite get it. It's the season of these girls can't quite get it right every episode. Right, right. Um, well, man, I, it was it was it was fun to watch that happen and be like, they're gonna get away with it. No. It was, yeah. <laughs> but then when he left, I was like, yeah, you know what? He should leave, and they did screw it up. And that's their fault. And yeah. I was like pissed at the girls a little bit. Yeah. Well, and at that moment, I I did like that. Finally, the camera didn't turn on Donna there. Yeah. Because um, they really stepped in it together. Yeah, they did. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, they both decided to do the thing, and Tom as well. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, Tom as well. As we just keep saying, the girls, I think, brief mention of Go USA Girls Soccer, right? Oh, yeah, man. Did you watch it? I did not watch it, but I saw it was like 4-0 to zero or something like that. Uh, incorrect. 5-2. Uh, 5-2. Five to 4-0 to two? Four to zero in the beginning, okay. and then it turned 5-2. to two. Okay. But a wonderful game, and it just timestamps this episode a little yeah, bit. Yeah, really We're doing does. it uh, <laughs> during the day that USA is the champions of the world. Yeah, there you go. So go as USA on the 4th of July weekend. Yeah, man. Um, so let's talk about Gordon. Um you know, Gordon's going back home. He's got, uh, you know, he's going to meet up with Henry, played by uh, Kevin Rankin, really cool actor. Um, yeah, I feel like he plays a murderer a lot or something. He looks like a rapist. <laughs> yeah, Doesn't got, he? <laughs> he's got a, a rape look. Um, although I'm sure in real life he's a very nice it's guy. It's sure pleasant yeah. man, probably married with kids. Probably. He's he one knows. of those guys you see at a restaurant and you're like, oh, it's uh, it's that guy. Yeah. He's yeah, that yeah. guy. You, yeah. see him, you see him all over the place in yeah. films and stuff. Guest he's, star. He's a really cool actor. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like you were talking like last episode with Gordon being very isolated, like, oh, man, for cool. He's going home to, to meet with his brother and he's, he's going to tell his brother and that's going to be great. Nothing bad can happen here. Yep. Well, what did you say his actor, the actor's name was again? Kevin or, Rankin. Kevin. I thought Kevin did a great job in that. In every scene, it felt like, mm, like we're not getting the whole story from this guy. Yeah. Like there's a look in this guy's eyes that's mm -hmm. telling me this is not going to end well. And I don't know why. And he seemed pure, perfectly pleasant. But just in all those scenes, I thought, yeah, something is off. Yeah, well, sort of like a lot of sort of man. It feels like there's a lot of truth here, and then there's kind of like, oh yeah, I back down the driveway and right. Got the so everyone's lying a little bit, but the, yeah. yeah, there felt like some badness. Um, yeah, and it turns out he's an alcoholic. Yeah, and that's what I was before that sort of came up, or before we saw the truck. I was like, man, you know, like uh, Julie sort of says, like, oh, your brother, like, kind of like I see him more often, right. And then and he looks like an alcoholic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they have it's a method, look. man. He's right, it's a method. method. Yes. Um, but then you know, the, right before the, the the truck comes out there, I'm like, "Has this guy got a drinking problem?" Right. It sounds like he kind of is doing that thing where you sort of make up a lot of convenient stories yeah. that are like Gordon's like, "Okay, sure." And then he looks at the the truck pretty hard. They're like, "Yep." What happened exactly? Yep. I saw a funny uh, tweet uh, right after the show. It said, uh, "This episode, in this episode, every character had the worst day of their lives." Yeah, <laughs> it was a heavy episode. Yeah, it was yeah. a heavy episode. Um, yeah, well, and, I, I like I like Gordon. You know, finally telling somebody what's going on. Which with him. when you, when he's telling Julia, uh, well, his brother first. He did tell his brother. Yeah, that's yeah, right. He, he did tell, tell him at the bar. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's a good moment. And then I kept being weird, like, hey, uh, the brother keeps being like, I'm under hard times. And I kept thinking it was weird that uh, Gordon wasn't just like, here's some money. It seemed like he was trying to sort of drop that, or Henry was right. to him, sort of like, yeah, you know, things have been tough. And yeah, and I'm thinking if the dude just gave uh, his wife's parents like $80,000 or whatever it was, he can't <laughs> throw his... $23,000. Oh, well, how much was that? $23,000. $23,000, that's less. He can't throw his bro a few bones? Uh, well, maybe, maybe he doesn't not. trust him. Maybe it is a pattern of alcoholism. He doesn't know it's true. Yeah. Well, he, he kind of figures out things pretty quickly there, calling the dad, talking to Julie. Like, this story's not really adding up. Right. But, you know, in an episode where Gordon finally gets to kind of, like, realize the reality of, like, that things aren't going well, all this stuff is, that's happened from being around tech has really messed up his brain, the, you know, the brain, brain atrophy thing. Uh, Cephalopathy, I think was the word. Wow, well, well done. Um, you do your homework. Oh, yeah, well, I, I learned it last After week. high school, I stopped doing all homework. Okay, yeah. good. Well, I, I'm a li I live in the moment. I'm very uh, Buddhist. <laughs> okay. Is that I'm, what it is? I'm know. not Buddhist, but uh, I try to live in the moment. Okay, good. Good to know. Except when I'm trying to fall asleep and then all my demons come and I can't <laughs> sleep all night. <laughs> Uh, let's do that podcast after. Okay, that fine. Well, um, you know, it ties into Gordon having demons. You know, I thought it was... <laughs> it does. Um, I thought the affair moment, if we want to oh, segue man. into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think it was it's it's written well that moment in that yes, affair horrible. And we all we we both audibly said, No, I don't was so Yes. But what I think is good about it is one, because like it's been two episodes of we all feel bad for Gordon. You know? Yeah. And mm -hmm. and we see that he's obviously lonely, he's obviously feels isolated, he obviously can't figure out what his next step is. Mm -hmm. And this is just like obviously almost a cry. And we even see afterwards it was a cry for help. Like why is he telling this woman all this stuff? And yeah. he just needs I've had those moments in my life where I've had something like so uh like um jarring happen mm -hmm. that I, like I, do, I talk to a weird person that isn't even that close <laughs> to me about it because I'm just like I need to get this out. Right, but you would think that 
the wife is this person i mean well, she's remember last episode she shot him down hanging out two that's three true. or four times that's true so it's not her he can't he feels like he can't talk to her uh, you know so i'm saying it's not uh, we all said ugh, and i was reading tweets about it everyone hates gordon now but yeah. i think they did do it in a way where you go you know what that's a horrible move but in a way it's like okay like i get it in a way yeah I just it's not just j dick yeah well i don't know i mean it was, it's really it was very disappointing to me because i'm like this guy kind of finally has his act together i mean wasn't like the greatest husband or dad last season this season he's kind of got his stuff together even though he's doing coke i mean he's got a lot of stuff going on but i'm like really dude yeah really oh man like it just it, it it personally hurt like and yeah. I, I like that i'm this invested in the characters for yeah. that to hurt but i'm like man your wife is pregnant you don't know about this yeah. uh the girls are here with your family that's the thing Dude, too when this... he goes home yeah no i, I get it like okay like his, his it's basically his, it's not going to get any better the brain's going to keep atrophying he's that you know when he's talking in the back of the truck there i thought he was really giving a great delivery there about how scared he was you finally got that he talks about um you know, I thought that if I just didn't talk about it, it wouldn't be real. Right. But it's finally catching up with him. But this isn't the person that needs to know that, especially when you just cheated on your wife with, I guess, an ex fling or possible. No, his brother's ex fling. His brother's ex fling. Yeah. So they never, yeah, yeah, yeah they never right. even hooked up. They never did. Maybe he had his eye on her, but I'm like, I think it wasn't even that. I don't think it's like he wanted. I think it was a cry for help, and he was like, I need yeah. a connection with someone. Because then he went right from that to telling her. And you think, like, from a character perspective, what's his objective in saying all that? And I would just guess that he didn't even have an objective more than that, like, I need to tell someone yeah. this that will, like, comfort me. Right. Well, because when he tells his brother, he's like, you know, look, it's going to be fine. It's going to be all right. And, you know, I haven't told Donna yet. And even his brother, his drunk brother, is like, uh, dude, like, he gives him the look of, like, shouldn't he have told her? Right. Even that guy knows. And then... I was wondering, I'm like, okay, they're in the back of this truck. Maybe she's going to be confused about what's going on with him or think that he's coming on to her. And then he starts moving in for it. And I'm like, this is like the Mount Rushmore. Shouldn't we be decisions. being a little angry at her as well? She's sleeping with a married man. Is the person that's the, ch the opposite person of the one in the relationship, uh, do they have no fault? Uh, well, there's some fault there, obviously. There's you know, some. You know I guess it's on. easier more to... Of the, more of the faults with him. Obviously. Well, if she was a main character, maybe we think the faults with her a little bit more maybe but, but i mean obviously he's the one with the made the and he initiated yes and he initiated the cheat yeah, it's true he moved man. he did that whenever you do that little jerk forward yeah and they don't act repulsed <laughs> that means it's on i've learned that in the bars okay good to know <laughs> i will file that away for file me. that away for your wife never so you'll know if your wife is um in or repulsed uh, she's usually in. She's repulsed? No. She's oh, she's usually, in. Okay, usually good. In. That's just, a sign uh, of a good marriage. When you see this face, it, there's okay. really not much I do this whole show aroused. Right. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Thank you. Dave. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, well, let's take this little awkward break and Dave uh, possibly hitting on me. I don't know. I have to settle down for a second and look at some pictures of women. Um, guys, yeah. I almost have a thousand Instagram followers, so please start following <laughs> me on Instagram at yeah. Dave Abbott. There you D -A -B -E -A -B -E -D. go. D-A-B-E-A-B-E-D. I need 50 more. There you go. Um, well... One thing that you should also do while you're following Dave on Instagram is mm -hmm. uh, go to iTunes, give us a rating and review on our show. Sure. We'd certainly appreciate it. The network appreciates it. After Buzz TV has over 100 hours of content every week for after shows. If you watch TV, this is the place to come to discuss it mm -hmm. and see Dave and I fumble around with all these tech uh, techie terms that we don't know. We don't know. But, you know, I think we do. What I like what we do on this show is that we try to discuss topics, thoughts. We don't just do. It's not just a review of the show. Yeah. We try to break down what the conversation you might be having at home. Well, we're fans. We're fans of we're the show. We're fans of the show. This is, this is what I would be doing at home anyway. Yes. It just so happens we, we're doing it here. As my mom says, I I hate going to movies by myself because uh, she doesn't have anyone to talk about it with afterwards. So we right. are your, if you're lonely and have no friends, <laughs> uh, not that my mom is either of those things, but yeah. if you are one of those people, we're, we can be your friends. Yeah, absolutely. We're very friendly. Yeah, so, you know, give us a rating review on the show. We'll mm -hmm. give you a shout out on the show. We got a couple of ratings and reviews to give some shout outs to here. Three of them, in fact. Wow. They can if you can hold on that long. That's like a 300% increase from last week. 3,000%. Uh, 3,000%. Percent, 3, percent. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, so this one comes from, looks like FF loves SG1, which I'm guessing mm. is Stargate 1. Uh, good viewing choice there. Uh, this guy, this um, gal, guy, knows. We don't know. FF? Uh, FF. 
Frankie Faison, maybe? Right. He's a big fan? Fatoon, yeah. I can't think of a girl's name that starts with an F off the top of my head. Neither can I. Yes, um, Flores. Uh, fan of the fan of the podcast from last season. Um, he says one of us is not old enough to remember the period. Uh, Dave, how old am I in real life? I'm not 24. You're. I don't even. I don't think I know how old you are in real life. You're over 30. <laughs> yeah, I'm like 73. You're 73. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think that you may have been taking our joke a little seriously. Maybe you there. saw the gray in your beard. Uh. Well, thanks, Dave. I have gray in my hair. You just don't well, have hair. Or you'd. Uh... Wow, Dave. <laughs> you this shave is, it though it's not like you don't have hair you make yeah, a choice yeah, yeah. you I go do with make a Patrick choice. Ewing look this is a yeah. rabbit hole I'm still getting through the first review here um, <laughs> uh, he says it's really fun to hear us talk about the show which oh, is good. really cool thank you sir or madam uh, Pocket Pets says Pocket I'm, Pets yeah man says, sounds sexual <laughs> <laughs> to you I'm not surprised Dave <laughs> right um, I love your podcast. Oh, uh, your comments are insightful and perceptive. I even uh, like your witty off-topic Oh, banter. well, here I am. Finally, yeah. <laughs> somebody understands. This is actually more directed to me, Dave. But oh, um, God, this fine. is, i.e., first aid podcast and call it scrutiny. Very clever play on words and a name. That's Mutiny. what they're going to pick out. What about my erection humor? Okay, well, <laughs> that's hilarious stuff. Uh, most of all, I love your voices. They're pleasant and well-modulated. Uh -oh. This is a real deal-breaker for me. Content matters. But if I can't listen to you, I won't. So wow. we're doing so really well. So we modulate well. well. I've always yeah. said that about us. Yeah. Yeah. We're, it's, a, it's a progressive show. It is. Um, also, this one from One Surfer Carl. These are really some unique usernames. Yeah, here. man. They're great usernames. One Carl. Love Halt and Catch Fire. Great. And the banter between the hosts, as long as they don't go too far off topic. Is that what it says? <laughs> it does say <laughs> that. <laughs> can't please them all. But thank you so much. Yes. Keep writing those reviews. We'll give you a shout out next week when you heed to my call. Thanks for doing that. Thank you. And you know what? It's a live show. Sometimes we just go. Yes. Off. But we're here now. Yes, we're here now. Let's go back on topic. Yeah, let's do that. Did we yeah. cover? We covered Gordon. Yeah, we covered Gordon. Let's talk about Donna, man. Donna. Donna. Um, let me say this. Yes, she was looking ahead. hot this episode. I don't think there's an episode where she doesn't look. There was just some close-ups today that I just okay. thought Donna is looking good. Cara Bechet, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, on the Emmy ballot. So we'll see if she gets a little nomination for the hmm. show. Okay. I mean, everyone's yeah. on the Emmy ballots, isn't? It? Yeah, I think she's one of the front runners though. Oh, cool. At least something I read today. Oh, well, good for her. Showed that so. Hopefully yeah. Maybe she'll get a like definitely a, some stellar uh, scenes this season. Yeah, man. I liked all that really strong stuff in the um, negotiation with with, um, mm -hmm. with with Joe there, and with the miscarriage uh, conversation with her mom. Really strong, like. Yeah. Yeah, resolute, some really resolute stuff. Yeah. Um, super strong episode for her. Um, I just like having her also, um, gosh, the, the irony basically that happens there with her being the one to sort of blow things up with Joe instead of Cameron, who that's normally Cameron's role there. Yes. It's like they almost heard our podcast, which they probably all listen to, the writers, I and then do strong do. rewrites. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> week to week. yeah, because yeah, we can't, we could not handle another episode of Cameron freaking out about something, right? right? So and I not think, backing her girl, right. although she does. That there, when when things shut down there, Joe shuts down the network, right? But that one makes sense. It does make sense, but I'm like, I'm really tired of seeing her call her out. It is true in in in, in, in front of their company. Yes, and really great to have Boz come in there. I mean, obviously Boz knows that that she's got the pregnancy. And have him come in there and just absolutely shut Cameron down and someone come into her defense. But man, like what a cool, what a cool episode for her, man. You, you, you had said, and you weren't joking. Oh, maybe she's going to get uh, an abortion, abortion last. Uh, yeah. Called well, it. When she's talking with her mom in the kitchen there and talking about, oh, I had a miscarriage. None of us, neither of us believe that. Yeah. Well, no, because well, it, it didn't happen. Right. Um, but I'm like, this is one of those conversations to self. And is she making a decision right now? Oh, no, don't make that decision, especially without the husband knowing at the very least. And Cameron takes her Now, to what's the... worse, abortion or an affair? Uh, I'm not really going <laughs> to say. I'm not really going <laughs> to say. Please take a strong stance on I, one or the uh, other. You know, I'm not going to say either, but fans can tweet yeah, us that. Yeah, well, but that's, that's strong writing. Because now we do both, have, we have to both give both of these characters a lot a lot of both um yeah both betrayed each other's trust in one way or another yeah these are these are monumental decisions yes. that you can't reverse you cannot reverse um wow, wow. yeah yeah uh I, when she's driving to, i mean I, we figured out when she's in the car with camera we're like oh she's driving she's gone to, planned parenthood shout out yeah um just oof. 
heavy yeah, stuff. Yeah, tough. Uh, it's definitely been a tough couple episodes for her. And um, yeah, it's really the the show has kind of pivoted from strong onto Cameron for these last two ones, mm-hmm. pretty strong on to Donna and her kind mm-hmm. of struggle. And you know, this episode was like striking me like. Donna, is it just the work? Like, what is it? Have we lost track of exactly what's going on in her head? I mean, it's hard to know. I mean, a lot of it is is staked in mutiny and the success of right. that. Um, but man, I mean, she even makes that crack about Gordon. You know, he's got a lot of time on his hands. Is that the right? Mom. Um, you know, I mean, it's not like he's not helping out. He's got plenty of money. You yeah, know? And, I mean, I, right. He, he has stepped in it a lot for their business and really kind of messed things up, but. All of this stuff going on with West Group is because of him. Um, it's just, it's just a bad time. I know? guess it's. Just, I mean, but yeah, it just does seem like she is like walking with the weight of the world on her shoulders. Yeah. And I guess just the way that the show has been structured, the last two episodes, like you don't. I feel like I didn't feel like the. the str- I feel her emotion, but I don't like see the stress upon her actually physically happening. Maybe because it was an episode where not a lot of. It didn't take a lot of time on like, oh no, like you guys, everything's on you guys. Right. Well, I, I mean, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's it's the worst time for her to have a kid because of all the mutiny right. stuff. I mean, well, they, and there was that episode where they like, what are you gonna have a kid again? So and they right, embarrassed her right. in front of everybody. And so, and so this is the thing that's happening now, and the, I guess, baby that she'd rather be taking care of is mutiny yeah. rather than. Her actual baby man. Right. It, was just, it was just oh, really sad, man. But some really effective writing, like I was talking about yep. at the top of the show. Like this one, this one hit me right in the feels. Yeah, no, I thought definitely felt for all the different characters on this one. Um, uh, but and she kept saying she's gonna fix things, and she never, she didn't fix one thing. Yeah, well, I mean, she go, well, she went back to jail. That is true. So she fixed that briefly, yeah. and then she kind of, yeah, the whole mutiny team decided to screw it up together. Yeah, well, Boz was right. Yeah, you could just you could just build the machine. We knew Boz was gonna be right as soon as he said that. Right? Yeah. Well, that's that's his function yeah. on the show is to be the guy to talk sense into people, right. and then you know what? Like like a good dad does, which is pretty much what he's gonna yeah. be in there. Like, all right, you want to go over there and step in it? Sure. Yeah. Go, go ahead, ahead and do it. I'll yep. be over here. Yep. Being right. Yep. You know? Shaking my head. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, really cool that we got to see her sing this episode. I'm assuming that was her voice for real. It was nice. Um, I fell asleep, but then woke up immediately. And watched that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, man, she. I'm assuming she just come from the Planned Parenthood place, and. Oh yeah, because you're just sitting there. Yeah. I thought it was weird that the kids didn't say, like uh, your kids are uh, like across the country, and you don't call they don't call each other to say good night. Yeah, well, maybe they were going to, but, you know, Jimmy... No, they was like, hey, she can't fall asleep until she hears your voice. Like, yeah. what kind of family is this? Why don't you hear your voice anyway? Mom, good night, they, love this you. This family's got problems going on. Uh, I guess. The bedtime call is, is, is one of many. Well, the, I feel like the kids would be like, um, can I talk to mom before I go to bed? Yeah. Um, again, on, like, her performance, like, what a really complex thing to have just come from the abortion clinic. And, and then, then be talking singing to, to your daughter. Yes, to and I thought that was really effective as well because mm-hmm. you could see in her eyes she's like, "I do love my children." Yeah, and maybe, maybe even further, I would have loved a new another child. one. Yeah, but obviously she's made this decision. I, do you, well, I'll save that question for predictions okay. about you know if she's going to tell Gordon or not. Right. But, well, that's a tough one. Um, hey, you know, back, what's uh, Gordon's the actor's name? Do you know off the top of your head? Scoot. Scoot. Uh, just saw him uh, in Gone Girl the other night. Watched yeah. it again. And yeah, yeah, he yeah. plays a similar character, mm-hmm. but like kind of like, oh. But uh, just reminds me that it's a great actor. And also that like, it's just crazy that actors can be leads in shows, but then have tiny roles in large movies. Right. Acting careers are interesting. Yeah, yeah. Scoot, Scoot gets around. Man. Yeah, he's, he gets uh, around. He's, in, uh, he's in Batman vs. Superman coming up. He is he's just in every movie with Ben Affleck because he was in the other one. <laughs> I he guess was in so. uh, what's the other one with uh, uh, the one where they're uh, hostages in uh, when Ben Affleck is Argo. the CIA. Argo, yeah, yeah Argo. Yeah, yeah. So he just follows Ben's career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, that's what I'm gonna do well, too. It's, it's not a bad one to follow, man. I wouldn't. Uh, I don't follow Matt. Wouldn't mind it myself. No, I'm not going. I, he asked me if I wanted to follow. I said no. Okay, well, that's his choice. Um, um, so, so we're let's going talk to Cameron. Cameron. Yeah, let's talk about her. Um, I so like. We almost got her boobs. In the beginning, I don't think you're going to get that on. We're not going to, yeah. but we almost did. Okay, well that's uh, something. To look I think forward we should to just say that we're like, oh, well, Cameron almost. I could. Th- I think she was also looking very hot in this episode too. She's a, she's a good looking lady. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that um, him the the whole. I mean, the, I was, man, these co- these guys know about her and Tom. 
Oh yeah, they 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 definitely have to know, and I like that they sprung the trap there. Yep. <laughs> See Tom falling out the window. That was some great. Well, comedy. it's pretty dangerous to be uh, coitusing in the same bedroom ten feet away. I mean, there is a lot of loud music playing all the time, but like, come on, guys. Well, and yeah, and like, that's what kind of coitus is happening? They have to be that quiet the whole time. Sounds like it's not that great. <laughs> I did tweet at um uh the actor who plays Tom, but he hasn't tweeted me back yet, so we'll see. Okay. We'll see if he does. Tom, you're hoping to have a little alone time with him as well? I just want to get maybe what, how do you have great sex in a uh, computer <laughs> workshop? <laughs> Some tips in case I switch careers. Okay, good yeah. to know. Um, so back yeah. to Cameron. So yeah. uh, her and Tom, it's a weird relationship still, right? Like you can, uh, they don't spend a lot of time fleshing out what it's like for them to work together if it's good if it's bad it seems like it's amicable yeah it seems like it's good i mean i think i think that that the them dating is a really good fit um like yes. personally for the two characters and, and i like that they're i mean there's enough going on that they're not going to complicate it with like them having problems too well though they did last episode um they had a little bit of something going on but then they got through it you know right. it wasn't like a i, I like that it's not a big storyline okay now it's they're not, on the outs or something right that's like that. true that's true um and him you know, picking up on that thing with Gordon, or not Gordon, with Joe, and then coming up with a solution, you know, together, which obviously, it, eventually, it's not a good it solution because it, it, yeah. it failed. Huge fail. But, you know, him picking up on that, you know, um, which would have funny scene, seen the two of them stand in the kitchen there, but like. At, at the same height. Yeah, we, and the same height. We realized, yes. Both pretty tall guys. Tall guys, um, like us. Yeah, Lee Pace is like maybe like 6'3 or 6'4. Right, we need to be on that show. Yeah, because I'm tired of being uh, trying to audition for shows where the <laughs> actors are small. I have no chance. <laughs> yeah, um, but it, 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 just like a funny conversation to see the two of them stand there and like, mm -hmm. oh, so you guys? Uh, it's like a pissing contest. Worked hey. together? Yeah, right. Is it, guys, quite as oh man, did we work we together? Worked it out. Yeah. It was louder than what you're doing. <laughs> Maybe I guarantee that. But, uh, you know, uh, that, man, that scene with Cameron and Boz, um, them talking outside. Quick scene, but effective. Very effective. Um, the stuff that I felt like her character has need to be, needed to be told. Um, other people have other things going on. You're, you, basically, this is the pot calling the kettle black here. This is exactly what you do all the time. Yes. So you can give her a little leeway. I mean, otherwise, this this company's gonna, you know, essentially like implode, um, which they're on the brink of. Yeah, know? yeah. You know, to uh, and to jump back to uh, Gordon's brother for a second, because it, it made me think of that. In that, how did he, we both were like, how did Gordon's brother know about that he had an affair? He jumped to the conclusion very quickly. I feel like, yeah. I wonder if a scene was cut out that they originally had or something. But it also, just felt like the same kind of went for Cameron. She seemed to. to some episodes she takes in information like a slowing pouring slow pouring of mud <laughs> yeah. and other times she takes it in zippity zap so i felt like this one like boz yelled at her and then zippity zap she's like on board with like being uh, a buddy you know when dad yells at you you know like but he's you, yelled at her before he has but he barely let her talk in that scene right he like every time she tried to cut him off he just talked louder than her and it, that to me was amazingly satisfying because this character, you know, like we've talked about how frustrated we've been with her sort of being in and then being out and then sort of throwing Don onto the bus. I mean, he, she, she does that in the beginning yeah. thing when, when the, you know, when he turns it off. It's like she was actually just using a great business business tactic. And also, you guys can't afford the five dollars. Right. So you really should be backing her here and you guys should be together going against Joe. here. Yeah. Um, the great to great to Man, that that scene, I loved it. Yes, loved it. Um, I think that's pretty much pretty much all we got for the episode. Or do you have? Uh... I feel like that's uh, that's a pretty full episode. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I wrote down anything. Oh, uh, oh, you know, I th uh, go back into Gordon again when they were laying on the in the car bed talking about life. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, uh, do you ever just sit back uh, wondering uh, if you had chosen a different path? Yeah. And I just thought that was a great line because I think, and you probably experience it too, as you get older. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that is a thought that you kind of have every once in a while. You're like lying mm -hmm. in bed. You're like, huh, I wonder what if I had done if I would have done this thing. And yeah, I thought about that on my 61st birthday. Uh, right, yeah. right. Which was 10 years ago. So, yeah, yeah, yeah a so. long time ago. Um, yeah. So that was a deep thought I had. Uh, apparently, you don't think it's as deep, uh, but we don't have to talk about it. <laughs> no, I know I do think it's as deep, but you, yeah. just, you just made it 
They, they just, just sing yeah. to me. Yeah, I didn't and, I, you know, I wonder, I feel like in every TV and movie, when family members or good friends see each other, there's always so much hugging and backslapping. And I feel like in real life, pe- never, people never greet each other with such exuberance. Hey, buddy, slap, 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 huggy, huggy, huggy. Oh, my God. Look at each other. Scratch the head. Have you ever met like bet, met anybody like that? All the time, Dave. It's called, you, my, real, it's I called mean, my real life. You yeah. scratched my head on the way in, but I just thought that was because <laughs> you like my uh, conditioner. I do. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's get into some predictions here, man. Okay. And now, you're after Buzz TV. Predictions. Reminds me of Halloween every time. Yeah. Um, predictions. Do yeah. we want it to? Is there like a specific area we need to predict? No. Well, one we know that uh, broadband is now being introduced. Yep. Again, cool. shocking that they're talking about this in 1984 when I did not get broadband probably until <laughs> ninety like seven or something. Yeah. Um, so we think Joe and Muni is obviously going to be working together again. Are they going to buy them for forty thousand dollars? <laughs> I don't think they're going to buy them for forty thousand. That's what I said. I mean, they mentioned forty thousand dollars. I don't think that's how much they're buying the company for. That'd oh be, no, it'd be kind of a ripoff. Would it? Yeah, if they can pay, who was it? Like Tom, like twenty five grand or whatever. Was that what they were paying him? Yeah, I think that was an episode. Well, maybe you're right. Like well, then where did that fun number come from? I don't know what that number was about. Mm, we'll have to watch next week. Yeah, well, that's what they're trying uh, to get you to right. do. Right. Uh, so I think that will continue to happen. Um, I do not think next episode that these two issues will be confronted uh, between um, Donna and Gordon. I think that will stave off for a little mm-hmm. while. And um, I don't know. I still want to see, like, I love the amount of Joe in this episode, and I want to see more still. So I'm just hoping there's yeah. just more Joe. Yeah, this was a really great Joe episode. Mm-hmm. I mean, like we said, it was great for all of our, our four main leads. Um, man, I, I do like that... Joe, even through the catastrophe that that was, the computer like melting through the table, I do like that he was still alert enough to realize that these guys did this in 24 hours. Yeah. And it's something that he, I think he said only like military and a few other specific yep. things are using. Colleges. And yeah, in colleges, he says that it's going to make modems obsolete or mm-hmm. dial up or whatever it was obsolete, which we know that it will. That's the, that's a cool thing about watching this show is we don't necessarily know where the characters are going. But we know where the technology is going. Um, even like that that Terminator reference, which I thought about it again later from last episode, where it's like basically the this, the, the things you're going you're building are going to eventually possibly ruin you or take over your lives or something. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of cool. Um, man, I I do think that I, I'm going to be bold. I think that Gordon is the that this is going to come out that he cheated on her, and I certainly hope it does, man. I think it will. I just don't yeah. think it'll be next episode. I think it'll be next. You think next so? Episode. Yeah, I'm I'm going bold here today. And do you think Sarah makes a uh, an appearance next episode? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I okay. think she's coming back. I mean, she I, obviously hasn't told her dad yet. Yeah. Well, it was. She said that we do need some time apart, so it wasn't necessarily a breakup. You know, like we, just need, we need to slow things down. I think is what she said. Um, yeah. I, I don't think that Donna will ever tell Gordon. About, no. About the abortion. Maybe last episode of the season. I think yeah. it's. I think it'll come out. I, I don't think she's ever going to tell. Well, we're fighting now. Him. Well, we are fighting now. It's a fight. Well, but that's what we're doing here, Dean. The predictions. We, okay, fine. Well, I'll come out. Yeah. A uh, hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Deal. Credits. Yeah. Credits, yeah. Hundred likes. Yeah. Um. So, Dave, where can people find you? Yes, online? please find me on Go Blue Dave Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, Dave Abed, D A V E A B E D, and you can see me uh, every Saturday this month at Next Door Lounge in Hollywood, uh, hosting a murder mystery dinner theater show. So, if you find yourself uh, wanting some entertainment, come check me and us out. Yeah, and you're also talking about the Brink a little in a little bit. Right? Uh, yes, and you can also see me uh, and listen to me every week uh, reviewing the new uh, Jack Black show, The Brink, on HBO. Funny stuff. Yeah, Good show. Yeah, show. I'm liking it. What about uh, you? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Isaac Johnson, Instagram the Isaac Johnson. Also mm-hmm. getting close to a thousand. Nice, we're in folks. a competition. Hundred bucks, yeah. hundred followers. <laughs> yeah, um, and go to my YouTube channel, the Isaac Johnson. Check out some stuff I got going on there. Thanks so much for hanging out with us this week, folks. We will see you next next week, week. and with a guest. With a guest. Yeah. And on Monday, right? Yeah, it's on a Monday. Monday. Did you say that? Yeah. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later.
The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.